Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss Normand, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how a version control system works. And in order to do that, I'm going to model a version control system using basically an Excel spreadsheet. Now, before diving into that, let's first talk about simple version controlling, a concept which you are definitely familiar with and that you've interacted with in the past. Let's say you've been given an assignment in school and that assignment is to write an essay on a particular topic. When you work on that essay, you'll probably write an initial draft. And after writing that first draft, you're gonna read through the draft. You might identify some paragraphs that you should delete, uh, some repetitive language that you should remove or come up with uh, some synonyms that could uh, replace the repetitive language. So you make the necessary changes that you wanna make on that first draft. And then when you go to save the file, rather than clicking the save button, what do you do? You select the save as button, you rename the file to like essay version two, and then you have basically two versions of your essay, the initial draft and then the second draft, which is essay v2. And why would you save two versions of the document? Well, you might later on uh, in later drafts find that you like some verbiage from uh, an earlier draft or maybe even the first draft, and you wanna reincorporate that ver uh, verbiage back into, uh, into the essay. So you keep around multiple versions. This methodology with simple versioning works fine in certain cases. For instance, when you're uh, working on like an essay for a school assignment. But what if you had to version more than one document? Maybe it was an entire folder of documents and it was hundreds of files that you had to version control. Additionally, what if you're not the only one uh, modifying the documents? Maybe you're collaborating with an entire team of people to make changes to those documents. If you're collaborating with multiple people on uh, a single document or multiple documents, you probably want to track who's making changes to which documents, when they're making those changes, and why they're making those changes. In these cases, which are very common, the Save As button just doesn't cut it. And these use cases require a much more robust solution. And that's where version control systems come in. A version control system should allow multiple people to collaborate on the same documents. It should allow you to track changes to a document in such a way that if the document were corrupted for some reason or deleted by accident, you could refer to the version control system's audit history of that document and essentially rebuild an exact copy of that document by applying each change in the audit history chronologically. So now that we know what a version control system should do, let's try and simulate a version control system using my Excel spreadsheet. In this simple example, I'm going to be version controlling just a single file. This is gonna be a program written in C, and uh, the purpose of the program is to simply print out to the console, hello world. So the name of the file is hello world.c, and as we're writing this program, we're going to track changes made to this file in our Excel spreadsheet or the version control system. Let's go ahead and take a look at that Excel spreadsheet now that we're uh, talking about it. So this is the spreadsheet and uh, you can see that it has some uh, column names. And let's go over the column names starting with the author. So if I'm making a change to a file, I'd like to know the author of that change. And then in addition to the author, I'd also like to know when the author made that change. So we want the time and date of the, of the change made to the document. The next thing I wanna know is why the author made this change. So I would expect an author message and that author message should kind of give a brief description of the change, summarizing the change and why they made that change. And then the next thing that I would wanna track is the actual change itself. So I want the text that was added to the document or removed from the document. I wanna know exactly uh, what content is in this particular change. And then after that, I also wanna know where that text was inserted or removed. Uh, so I wanna know the line numbers in the file that were changed or modified. And then in column G, I wanna know what the name of the file is that was changed. Now, if we wanted to know how these changes were organized, if we were to go back uh, and audit this version control history, we could look at the time and date, um, but what I'd rather do is I'd rather track the sequence of these changes using the change ID. So if, you're, uh, if you work with any modern version control system, each change that uh, version control system gen generates 
is going to be given a unique identifier. And in this case, we'll make it very simple, uh, the, the identifier. We'll just do it uh, sequential uh, numbering, starting at zero and then you know zero to uh, n number of changes. So now that we've reviewed the document, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up my uh, Hello World program and I'm going to uh, begin uh, writing the Hello World program. The first change that I'm gonna make is I'm going to include the uh, C standard uh, input output library. And that'll be my first change. I'll go ahead and save the document. And now I need to ask myself a question. So the question I'm gonna ask myself is, do I want to track this change that I made in my version control system? And if the answer is yes, then I should add a new entry in my uh, Excel spreadsheet tracking this particular change where I added uh, a new line to my Hello World program. In this case, I do wanna track this as a new change in my version control system. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go back to my spreadsheet. I'm gonna add a new entry. I'm gonna give it a change ID of zero. The author is Moss Norman. The date is, I'm gonna use the now function, uh, which should give me the current date and time. And then the author message, uh, in this case, I'm just going to say, uh, um, let's say started writing hello world added standard library okay and then the change text uh, what am I going to put here I'm going to put the actual content that I added to the file I'm going to put include right and then what line number uh, or line numbers were changed uh, just line number one, and then the file name is hello world.c. Okay, so we have our first change uh, documented in our version control system. Now let's go back to our, uh, <coughs> our program here. And the next change that I wanna make is I wanna add a main function that returns an integer. So uh, I'm making a new main function, the return is an integer and I'm just gonna return zero. So I made a new function, uh, added a return statement, and I think I wanna track uh, this as an individual change in my version control system as well. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull my uh, version control system back up, add a new change entry. The author is Moss Norman. The date is now. And in my author message, I'm gonna say I, uh, added a main function. Uh, let's say a driver function. And then the, the actual uh, change that was made is going to be int main turn zero. Okay. And then the line numbers, let's take a look at what line numbers were, were added in this case. So we modified line numbers three through six. And the file name is hello world.c. Okay. So let's go back to our uh, program and we'll continue modifying it. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call the printf function. And I'm going to uh, print out hello world to the command line. And again, I, I'm i gonna track this as an individual change in my version control system. So let's go ahead and create a new uh, entry in my version control system. With the change ID of two, I'm the author, the date, and then I'm going to say uh, invoke adding invocation, uh, or I'm just gonna say printing, printing hello world to the console, okay? And then uh, the actual text that was uh, added to the file, printf hello world. And then let's take a look at the no line number uh, that was changed, I think it's line five. Okay, so I modified line 
5 in this case, and the file that was modified is hello world.c. All right. So let me pull back up my file here. I like this program. It's uh, a work of art. Um, but you know what? I don't feel like this program is uh, really personalized. You know, I want the message that it prints out to the command line to be more personalized. So you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to modify this print statement and I'm going to address it to myself and I'll say, hello, Moss. I like that a lot better. It's a little bit more personalized. So I'm making that change. I'm saving the document. And now the next thing that I want to do is, of course, I'm going to track this change in my version control system. So I'm going to add a new entry here. I'm going to say uh, modifying the print statement. And then the te text itself. Uh, in this case, uh, since it's on the same line uh, the, as, as other text, I'm going to enter the entire um, I'm going to enter the entire line, okay? And the line number that was changed is line five. And the file is hello world.c. So this simple Excel spreadsheet demonstrates the core functionality of what a version control system does, right? If I, for some reason, were to lose this hello world file, whether it got corrupted or I accidentally deleted it or my computer exploded, um, I could refer back to the, or I should be able to refer back to the version control history if it was backed up on maybe the uh, on the web. And in this case, you'll notice that this is a Google Sheets document, so it is automatically backed up. I should be able to refer back to my version control system and the audit history and the history of, uh, or the version history of that file. And if I apply each of these changes sequentially, I should be able to rebuild an exact copy of my file, even if I lost, uh, for some reason, that file was lost or deleted. And one thing to keep in mind, I've been adding these, uh, these change entries manually into this uh, version control system spreadsheet. But uh, when you're using an actual version control system, it's automatically adding these entries for you. All you do is basically enter a command uh, and then the, the uh, version control system will add most of this metadata to, uh, to its history automatically. And in later videos, we'll talk about some of the more advanced features of version control systems like uh, branching and the different types of version control systems like decentralized versus centralized version control systems. But I hope this simple introduction helps solidify the concept of version control systems. And if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below in the comments. And if you liked the video, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos. Thanks for watching.